all rise for the Queen. <laughs> that was quite the intro. That is an intro and a half. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So there's been a few comments about my appearance this weekend. Usually I'm introduced as Milo's mum because I used to have the white hair. Yeah, I've changed that look. You can see I've changed it up. I'm now going for Thatcher. Someone in the corridor just said, you look just like Princess Anne, but without the horse face. <laughs> a lovely couple that I've seen here year after year. The lady kind of, I was, uh, when we were at dinner last night, the lady said, well, you've changed, Katie. Your, your hair's really changed. I'm like, yes, I'm, I'm trying to be female. <laughs> well, your hair's really changed. And her husband said, boy, have you got taller. I've also started wearing heels. It saves me explaining to uh, Americans that I'm not actually a lesbian, although now that my hair's grown, I'm not having to explain that quite as much. <laughs> it's a short-haired thing. Well done for surviving the chiller cabinet that is the Horowitz Freedom Center weekend here in the Breakers. It has been truly chilly, hasn't it, next door? Can I get a hands up if you would like the air conditioning turned down in the room next door? Lonnie, take a look at this, honey bunny. Mm -hmm. I come from one of the coldest countries on this planet. I come to a place that's nearly 80 degrees, and what do you guys do? Make it minus two. Mm. Thank you very much, the Horowitz Center. Were you guys all here earlier for Don Jr.? Was he not just great? Oh my goodness, I just love that man. You know, can you even imagine, not only is he Donald Trump Jr., but that Trump is his actual dad. His actual dad. Last time I saw my dad, I had to tell him off for wearing his favorite gardening shorts with the broken zipper out in public. That's my dad. And he got Trump. Can you imagine? Dad, dad, my boss is really getting on my nerves. My boss, oh God, no problem, no problem, Junior. You want me to bag daddy him? Dad, dad. The woman I work for is a whinging man-hater in a pussy hat who believes straight folks are evil. No problem, son. You want me to Hil Hillary her? I will crush her. I will crush her bigly. <laughs> Dad, I really love this girl at work, and I, I don't know how to tell her. No problem, son. Just grab her by the pu- Okay, okay. <laughs> That's all the advice I need, Dad. My name is Katie Hopkins. I am a straight white, Christian, conservative, married, mother of three small children under 15, and I am proud to be all of those things. People who know me know that most of my Muslim friends have 15 children under the age of three. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I don't have Muslim friends. I've had two husbands so far. I like to call lovely Mark my current husband to keep him on his toes. I guess I'm a bit like Ilhan Omar, except I've never married my brother. I did try proposing to Donald Jr. earlier as well. I think I could be so much better for him than Kimberly. After all, I've never dated a Democrat, unlike some. <laughs> the moral of my first marriage, ladies and gentlemen, is do not marry a man that looks like Matt Schlapp. <laughs> Too much hair. That much hair is not natural. He looks like something that came out of the forest. And I'm glad to see that so many ladies here have gone for a much more aerodynamic husband. <laughs> In the head department. Not gesturing at you, sir, but I'm definitely gesturing at you. <laughs> it's good to laugh, isn't it? I mean, really. I've come to realize that we lived in such utterly mad times that sometimes our best defense is truly just laughter. And it's one of the ways I think the Republicans are going to win this war, is through our sense of humor. Because Democrats are not blessed in this department. <laughs> Look at Meghan Markle. Hmm? Thank you very much for that gift, America. <laughs> I 
<laughs> truly. You really export, really, the best. <laughs> Take half of Mexico and what do we get? Meghan Markle. <laughs> I can't stand the woman. You send us your trailer trash and we have to add her to our royal family. <laughs> She's a classic globalist. Kiss a migrant, hug a jihadi, act the victim. She got her claws into Prince Harry and look what happened to that boy. He used to be the best royal we had. He was fun. He would always turn up naked in Vegas having a party. He was flying a helicopter in Afghanistan with the lads. If you couldn't find Prince Harry, you could find him under the best looking woman in the UK. That was Prince Harry. Now look what's happened. He married one of yours, Meghan Markle, a globalist. He's about as much fun as my mother-in-law, and she is dead. <laughs> but for all the challenges faced by conservatives here in America and in the UK, I say this is a great time to be alive. And I would not choose to be living at any other time in history because this is our time. Yes, it is. We have 354 days to put Donald J. Trump back into the White House, and that is what we're going to do. Yes, we are. We have 30 days to put Boris Johnson in at number 10, and 75 days before we deliver Brexit finally in the UK. If we fight hard enough, ladies and gentlemen, we will live to, do, to see the day where we see Donald Trump and Boris together on the steps of the White House. It is going to be truly a terrific time. It will be like Reagan and Thatcher, ladies and gentlemen, if they had hairstylists with special educational needs. <laughs> Boris truly does have dreadful hair, truly. It is as uncontrollable as Nancy Pelosi's dentures. You just never know where it is going to end up. But you know, just like Trump too, strong women like me, I just went very deep there. <laughs> strong women find Boris incredibly attractive. He speaks fluent Latin and Greek. He's irrepressibly good natures. He can recite Homer's Odyssey from memory. And if I may... <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. so he won the nation's hearts when he did this for a publicity stunt and that zip wire got stuck, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> He was armed with nothing but the Union flag as his ever-tightening harness and strangulated manhood became visible for the world to see. <laughs> That's my man. <laughs> so the next slide. I, uh, last time I was with Boris, um, I told him uh, he was lined up to be my husband number four. I saw actual fear in that man's eyes. That is the look of a frightened man. Unsurprisingly though, Boris has had many, many girlfriends. Many girlfriends. I am talking almost as many as Clinton, and I'm talking Hillary. <laughs> With Donald and Boris together, we can hold back the forces of evil for a little while longer. We can buy time for America to strengthen its resolve. Standing together on both sides of the Atlantic, we can hold back the filthy tide of Islamists, globalists, and feminists that are polluting our Western civilization. It is too late to save my country. My message to America is consistent. Do not become like us. Do not fall as we have fallen. Islamists know that my country is nearly there. Uh, demographics alone dictate that they have won. Muslim births outnumber all others by 2035, and Muslims are an outright majority in my country by 2050. Muslims yield huge political, financial, and social power. Fearful for the future, many of you will know, Jews are already exiting 
the uh, UK. There is an exodus, a jexodus underway to America and of course to Israel. They are forced out from within. And the next target of these people, the next target of the Muslim mob, is our peaceful Indian community. They're the best of us. They work harder than us, their children outperform ours in schools, and they love the UK. The Indian diaspora are truly the best of us, but they are hated by the Pakistani Muslims of the UK. In October, the Indian embassy was defaced by the Muslim Pakistani mob. They um, vandalized the building, they covered it in rotten food and waste, and our Pakistani Muslim mayor, Sadiq Khan, who is nipple height, I make that point for a purpose, he looked the other way. I wanted to share this short clip with you, if I may, it's only two minutes. Um, it was just from a few days ago, it was Diwali in the UK, which is, you know, well, it's Diwali globally, but it was a celebration in the UK, you know. The Diwali is the Hindu festival, it's their most religious day, their most religious moment, and it's the celebration of the triumph of light over evil. Um, so what do you think perhaps our Pakistani Muslim mayor allowed the Muslim mob to do on this special Indian religious festival? Muslims were bussed in to London from mosques all across the UK on free buses in a show of strength to intimidate our Indian community that they no longer want in the UK. So I thought I would go along to see exactly what they were playing at. Would you be kind enough to play the clip? So that's London today. I would like to say they all have exceptionally bad breath. I refuse to be intimidated by men with bad breath. Oral hygiene is a basic thing. So following on from my mission to white farms in South Africa, my next mission is to India um, to expose this hatred at its source and to give voice to the Indian Hindu, um, Indian Hindu women and their daughters who are the victims of these guys in India. Um, their daughters are often kidnapped and forced to convert uh, to Islam. And so I will be there in February 2020 uh, to bring the fight to those people. Um, thank you.
So along with the Islamists that we are up against uh, in Londonistan, uh, we have the feminists as well, the extremist feminists, or feminist 2.0, where O stands for, oh my God, I think that thing is actually a woman. <laughs> I've never been a fan of feminists at the best of times. First wave feminists were the slightly overweight women who mo mostly own cats. <laughs> they believe in Clinton and they knitted stupid pussy hats and held signs at Trump's inauguration saying, my pussy is made of steel. <laughs> okay, darling, mine has had a 14 pound baby out of it without stitches, but I don't feel the need to brag about it, okay. <laughs> Extreme feminists, however, and their war on gender are far more dangerous. They believe that men are women and can compete as such in sport, that children must be taught that they are whatever gender they feel on that day, and that it is against the law to think differently to that. Uh, in the UK, these are our road signs crossings. <laughs> these are our pedestrian crossings in Trafalgar Square under Nelson's column. I was crossing the, uh, the road with my daughter, and she said, Mummy, do we cross the road or not? I said, I don't know, darling. I think the green man is confused today. <laughs> Trans teams are brought into schools to force children to think the way they're supposed to think about trans. British schools can transition children without informing the parents. And British schools can trans, trans a child uh, without parental consent, without parental consent. One school in Brighton, which is sort of Austin, has 72 trans or non-binary children in one school. In our socialized medical healthcare system, the rate of trans operations on people under the age of 18 is it's, it's gone up by 700% in five years. This is coming to America. These are challenging times to be a mom. You know, I chat with my children a lot about it. I'm a libertarian capitalist, I tell them. I tell them they can choose to be whatever they want to be, they can love whatever they want to be, they can chop off their legs, call themselves a slug, they can be whatever they want to be, that just remember, I'll be the one writing the will. <laughs> So, you know, there are ways. Trump says to his children every morning, you do not take drugs, you don't have a tattoo. I can show some of you later privately. I have a tattoo on my back that says, do not get a tattoo. I'm that kind of mum. I figure when I'm face down in the dirt, I can still nag their ass. <laughs> it's true. So, you know, that despite the threats we face and the danger to our children, you should know that we are fighting this fight from a position of strength. Firstly, we know what we're up against. Globalists, Islamists, extreme feminists, and we know their weaknesses. Islamists are not a fan of pigs. <laughs> when the good people of Hungary and Poland needed to protect their borders against Merkel's Muslim migrant invasion, what did they send down to their border? Pigs. They started pig patrol on the border of Hungary and Poland. That's the people of Eastern Europe for you. I love them. Fantastic. Love them. Secondly, you have your constitution. What separates an American from a Brit Aside from your ability to make great food, have actual customer service, speak to each other in elevators, generally be outwardly enthusiastic, apart from those things, your constitution and your second amendment is a sacred text. It is a sacred text. I was the keynote speaker last month or so um, at uh, the Riverside County uh, Californian Republicans dinner, 500, 600 people in a room. There was a raffle and I was asked to give out the prizes at the end. Like when we have a raffle in the UK, maybe you give out like this horrible orchid that you take home and you kill the next day, standard, or like some nasty old bottle of granny's perfume that you're never gonna use. You know what I gave out in California in the desert at the Morongo Casino? Two AR-15s. Come on. 
even though we're not allowed to defend ourselves in the UK with anything stronger than a bottle of hand sanitizer, I am a fully signed up member of the NRA. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am. Most mothers do the school run with a sticker saying, baby on board, baby on board, like they're going to put their uterus in the back seat of the car. <sighs> Mine has an NRA sticker. It says, guns don't kill people, but I am willing to. <laughs> Israel, of course, has the right approach. Big round of applause for Israel. Yes, come on, Israel. Targeting Islamists and protecting its people with an Iron Dome as we sit in this room right now. They are under attack and they are protecting their people. We stand with Israel. Trump stands with Israel. And that is exactly where we need to be. Israel told Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar they were not welcome in their country, which does beg the question why America has not done exactly the same thing. Yes, it does. Ilhan Omar is the most dangerous woman in America today. Fact. She is the most dangerous woman in America. Israel built a great big wall, three meters wide, eight meters tall, so that if a man should try and climb it and jump from it, he would not survive. Three meters wide. That's even thicker than AOC. <laughs> In Israel, they have the Dead Sea. They say it's the most dead thing there is on the planet. They have never met Joe Biden. <laughs> and Israel is committed to national service, not as some kind of conscripted servitude, but as a shared endeavor to help build a country, hardwiring its values into its young. There is so much we could learn how easily we relinquish our freedoms, and yet how hard the fight to recover them once they are lost. America must fight right now with the determination of the Israelis or the protesters in Hong Kong waving the stars and stripes as they fight for their freedom. We must fight with the immediacy of the white farmers in South Africa making a last stand saying they will die in their boots for the love of their land. The time is now and the time for self-protection is gone. You know, I completed um, the training at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst and passed out as an officer in the Intelligence Corps. My father said I must have got somebody else's offer. Um, we trained under the motto, serve to lead. But by serving our soldiers well, that we might earn the right to lead them into battle. Uh, but I think maybe the Israeli special forces have it more succinctly. They say, follow me. I will only ask of you what I am willing to do myself. Follow me no matter what. Follow me even if it is painful. Follow me even as it hurts to be shamed by your friends or ostracized by children, unspoken to by colleagues, forced out of places that were supposed to love us unconditionally, asked to find another synagogue or another church, suddenly uninvited, follow me. And it's why this restoration weekend is so very special, because we have people with us who will stand up and say exactly that. And make no mistake, many of us will have stood in our kitchen in tears, hurting at the unkindness of others, wondering why we didn't just shut up and take the easy road wondering why we didn't just swim downstream with the rest. But you know, tears and doubts can be assuaged, but the threat we face cannot. What we may lose in our lifetime, for me, uh, that's been my jobs. They came from my family home. They've come for my children. And this lady and her husband came for my head. Um, but what we may lose is nothing compared to what our children might lose in theirs. What country will we leave the little ones of our little ones? What good wealth in this life if there is paucity of culture in the next? What good being liked by everyone if those who hate us will take what is ours? I say, follow me as we take this fight for freedom to those who would see it stolen from us. David Horowitz says, follow me, kindly and softly 
and with intelligence. And it is in this spirit that we all try to be the very best that we can be as we lead the fight for freedom. We want to show people the way brightly and with a sense of humor. When they go low, we're already on the high ground asking them to come join us. Because you know, in time, we will not be judged by feminazis and their cats, or the social media, or mob, or the Aluar Akbar brigade with their bad breath, but by history. And history will show that we are on the side of the right. When David Horowitz and the Freedom Center says, follow me, I say, let's go. God bless this family. God bless the Horowitz Freedom Center. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.